is 7.3. There we go. Okay, 7.3, logarithms and logarithmic functions. So, all right. Again, I know I say this all the time, but for today, you're just going to do what I tell you, and then I will start making it all make sense and come together and have a purpose in a section or two. So, I know that's kind of a tough pill to swallow, like just do what I'm telling you and I'll explain why later, but you kind of have to learn your ABCs before you can learn how to spell. Do you know what I mean? So Algebra 2 really is like an ABC class for like pre-calc and calc where you actually learn the applications and you learn the whys and the real world examples, but I kind of have to get you there. Kind of like when you first learned 2 plus 2 is 4. Well, if you didn't learn that, you couldn't do y equals mx plus b. Do you see what I'm saying? So bear with me today. Um, in a section or two, you'll understand why. I'll bring it all together. We'll talk about where it's used, but today we're not doing that, okay? So logarithmic functions is, pro I, I think that's new for you, right? You've never done logarithms before. So we still have exponential form. That's not new. X equals B to the Y. So that has um, an exponent in it. So it's exponential form, okay? Logarithmic form is a different way of writing this. It means the same thing, but it's different. So kind of like back when we had x to the one-fourth, and you said, oh, by the way, that's fourth root of x. Those are the same thing, but they were written differently, okay? So that's what we're going to do today, but with logarithms, all right? So we have a parent function, y equals log base b of x. So with this, it's either going to look this way, this is a logarithmic function, or it's going to look this way. It looks this way, if b is greater than 1, for example, if I have y equals log base 4 of x, it's going to do this, okay? If I have a fraction in between 0 and 1, like if I had log base 1 half of x, it's going to look like that. I'm not going to make you memorize these, okay? If I ever wanted you to do one, I would give you these, and you would have to know how to use them. Does that make sense? So don't feel like you have to memorize that, okay? Um... The domain is all real because there's no x's it can't be technically. The range is all real, but there is an asymptote. I think that says, what's it say, f of x axis? Yeah, y axis. So the y axis here is an asymptote where x is 0, basically. Um, it's a continuous graph, and you have an intercept at 1, 0. Again, you don't have to have that memorized. I'm just talking you through what the graph looks like, okay? Karen, Karen. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to transform them. This is not new to you, okay? If I had y equals x squared plus 4, what shape would that be? Parabola. Where would it move from the parent? Where's that move? Where's that move? Up 4, right? If I had, it's all right, y equals x minus 2 squared, where's that move? Right 2. This is the same thing as this, uh, x minus 2, absolute values. This is the same thing as this. This is the same thing as this. They all have the same rules with transformations, okay? You take your parent graph and you move it somewhere. So where does that move? Up or down? And then what's the second thing I say? Same as the sign is what I meant, still with that one. So this is our up or our down, same as the sign. It is the same thing we've been talking about pretty much all year. It's just a new graph, okay? Up or down, same as the sign. That's what all this says, by the way. It's just very super mathy and super formal, okay? So eventually we'll get to how those are written, but for now I just want to stick to what you know. What's this do? Left or right, opposite of the sign. What's the A in the front do? Fat or skinny or dilation. That's the same thing, okay? Fat or skinny, basically. And then if I had a negative, that would be a flip over x-axis. That is what all this stuff says that I wrote over. That all says the same thing, okay? One of these days when you're more comfortable with the easy way, if you will, with the layman's terms that I use, then we're going to shove all those together and actually use the fancy words towards the end of the year, okay? We'll talk about a stretch and a compression and K units up and K units down and stuff like that, but not today, okay? So don't freak out if, you, if this doesn't look pretty to you. It's okay. We'll get there, 
all right? But did you at least follow what I said here? If it's a plus 2 at the end, it's going to move up 2. If it's a minus 2 in a grouping symbol, any grouping symbol, a minus 2 inside would move it right 2. If it's a negative in front, you see what I'm saying? You know that, okay? So, write each equation in exponential form. This is in logarithmic form. Again, I'm not going to explain what logs are today, but that's what we're using. So if this is in log form because it has a log in it, okay, then we want it in exponential form. We want it to have an exponent in it. I don't really have a fancy way to explain this um, because a lot of these don't really have words. So let me read what the question says. This says log base 2 of 16 equals 4. I'm going to say it again. Log base 2, the subscript, the number that's low and little, is called the base. Log base 2 of 16 is 4. So here's how I do it. This to the that equals that. I'm going to say it again. This to the that equals that. I wish I had a fancier way to say it, but I don't. So you just do that. I'm going to say 2 to the 4 is 16. That's what that is. 2 to the 4 is 16. Is 2 to the 4 16? Yeah. So it's pretty easy to check if you did it right. If, if it's not equal, you did it wrong. Okay, so this is logarithmic form because it has a log in it. This is exponential form because it has an exponent in it. So again, the purpose, not the point today. Just doing it. That's all we're doing. Okay, this to the that equals that. Okay, log base 9 of 1 over 81 equals negative 2. So this to the that equals that. Okay, so 9 to the... Negative 2 equals 1 over 81. You're not actually doing any math. You're just rewriting it in a different form. Are you kind of okay? It's not hard, right? Let's make sure that's actually true. I don't want you to use the calculator, though. What's 9 to the 2? 81. So it's 9 to the negative 2, 1 over 81. You could use a calculator if you want to check it, but honestly, you'll get confused anyway because it'll give you 1 over 81 probably as a decimal. You'll be like, what's that? And you have to punch five more buttons, and we could do it without it, okay? So really quickly before we do this last one, remember on um, yesterday or the homework quiz you just took, what's the big number called? Base, right? Remember on that homework quiz you just took, I said, hey, remember your goal, get the bases the same? So when it's written this way in exponential form, the big number, if you will, the one with an exponent, is called a base. So see how this is log base 9? This is a base as well. So that kind of helps you too, okay? Why don't you try 18? This to the that equals that. And then see if it's true. If it's not true, you did it wrong. So this to the that equals that. So what is it? 9 to the 0 power equals, is that true? Yep. Good. Anything to the 0 is 1. Is that okay? All right. This time we're going to go backwards. Write each, fun each, each equation excuse me, in logarithmic form. This is an exponential. Now I want logarithmic. I'm going backwards, right? So I'm going to say log base something. What's the base up here? That big 9? So it's going to be log base 9. Okay? And we're going backwards. What goes right next to it? The 1 over 9 or the negative 1? The 1 over 9 equals negative 1. I don't really have a fancy trick to help you with that. So other than what I just said, I know the base is still the base. And then these just flip sides, just like they did before, right? It takes like a half a second to check it. So is this to the that equal that what we started with? Yeah. So I usually check it just to make sure I did it right. Do you see what I'm saying? So this one, what's the base? The 2. Log base 2 of 256 is 8. Check it. 2 to the 8 equals 256. Yeah, that's what they said. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, you try this one. So log base 27 of 9 is 2 thirds. Okay, 
So just like when we have exponents, go back for just a second. You don't have to turn your page. I don't care. But just like exponents have their own rules when you multiply, you add, right? These have their own rules. You have to like this to the that equals that. So log has its own set of rules because it's not normal numbers. It's something different that somebody created a long time ago because there was a need for it. I'm not going to get to that need today, but it's, there is a need for it. All right, 25, evaluate each expression. So you have to know this because even your, your calculator isn't going to do it, okay? So I need to know, first of all, the word evaluate means what? Find the answer, right? What kind of an answer are we going to get if it says evaluate and not simplify? If it said evaluate, what kind of answer do you think you're going to get? Just a number, right? If it says simplify, typically there's a letter in there somewhere, okay? So if it says evaluate, our answer is like 7, not 7x, okay? So if I'm looking for this answer, I don't know what it is, I'm going to call it x. Does that make sense? Okay. To solve this, I don't know how to work with log, and my calculator, most of them, don't either, okay? So we have to do this to the that equals that. 3 to the x equals 1 ninth. When you do that, the log goes away, essentially, right? This should look like yesterday. I should be able to leave and be like, okay, finish this. I'll be back in a second, right? What's our goal? Get the bases the same. What was that? Was that old wind, maybe? Okay, didn't matter. Okay, so what do you think we want our bases to be? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make it 3 to the x equals 9 to the negative 1. Is that okay? What do I want them both to be if I can? Hopefully a 3, right? This already is a 3. Oops, equals sign. Um, what's 9 the same as? 3 squared. Do you guys see how I didn't actually change the problem? I just changed the way the 9 looks. I didn't actually square both sides. I just said, hey, 3 squared is the same as 9, right? So once you have the same base, your exponents are now equal. So x equals power to a power is multiplication, so negative 2. Does that make sense? That happens a lot in algebra where the first step might be new, but everything after that you should kind of know what you're doing, okay? Technically, um, I don't know if this is on I-step or something like that. I'm fine if you just say x is negative 2, but was there really even an x in the problem at all? So I don't quite know what you mean by that. So technically your answer should be log base 3 of 1 ninth is equal to negative 2. Do you see what I'm saying? That's really what the answer is. But if you left it that way, it's okay for me. But I step would be like, where'd you get an X? There's no X. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm fine either way, but I always try to show you like the proper way. So that's technically the answer. And we could check it, couldn't we? Is 3 to the negative 2 1 over 9? Yeah. So we're right. Okay? Let's do another one. Log base 9 of 3 is I don't know. This to the that equals that. So 9 to the x equals 3 to the 1, technically, if you don't want to get confused later, okay? What do I hope both of them can be as a base? A 3. This one already is. What's 9 the same as? 3 squared. So the 3s don't actually, like, cross off or cancel mathematically, but the property says that the exponents are now equal. So what's x? 1 half. So technically... Log base 9 of 3 is 1 half. And if you wanted to check it, you could take 9 to the 1 half, which is really square root of 9, right? And is that 3? Yeah. Or you could use your calculator. It would give you the same. Okay? Why don't you guys um, at least set up number 35? Just set it up for me. So you say equal to x, this to the that equals that. So what do we write? One third to the x is equal to 1 over 81. So is everybody okay with that? You can bring the 3 up if you want to. I'm not afraid of fractions, so I'm going to leave it this way. And then I'll go back and do it later if you want to. So this is the same as 1 over 3 to the x equals 1 over 3 to the 4. Right? Because 3 to the 4 is 81. Okay. So then what's x? 4. 
x is 4. If you didn't like that way, you could have said 3 to the negative 1 to the x equals, that would be 3 to the negative 4. So then negative x equals negative 4. So either way, x is 4. So log base 1 third of 1 over 81 is 4, technically. If you give me x is 4, that's fine. Are you guys okay? You don't get the idea of what we're doing, but do you get what we're doing? Okay? So now we're going to graph some. Okay? Graph each function. So this says log base 1 over 9 of x. Okay? So if I go back to the front, log base b of x. So my b was a 1 over 9. Is everybody okay with that? So is that going to be this top graph or the second graph? The second one. It's a fraction. So I'm using this one right now. Do you guys get that? So I'm going to write these ordered pairs down on the back so I don't have to keep flipping. I'm going to use b comma 1, 1 comma 0, and 1 over b comma negative 1. Okay? I'm going to write those down. Uh, what did I say? b comma 1, whoops, 1 comma 0. Uh, what was the other one? Even I don't remember them because I don't have to. Uh, what did I say? b1, 1, 0, and 1 over b negative 1. Okay, that is our parent graph. So because this is like basically a plus zero, like nothing happened to it, these ordered pairs are going to be fine. I'm not moving it anywhere. Do you guys get that? There's like a plus seven, I'd be moving it up seven, right? But I'm not, okay? So B is one ninth. Do you guys understand that's the B? Okay, so I'm going to say one ninth comma one. That's one of my ordered pairs right? One zero is still one zero. That's not going to change. Okay. And then I'm going to say one over one ninth. What's one over one ninth? Keep it, change it, flip it, multiply by the reciprocal, use a calculator, just nine, right? So nine negative one. So these are the three ordered pairs that I need. It's going to be one ninth one, one zero, and nine negative one. So you just graph that the best you can. So 1 ninth 1 is like here-ish. Um, 1 0 is obviously there. And then 9 negative 1 is like right there. Okay? So you have three ordered pairs. You can't really see mine right there. It's right there, there, and there. You have three ordered pairs that are going to make a nice smooth curve just like this one. Okay? So you connect it the best you can. Your asymptote didn't change, so there's still a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. So I'm going to try not to cross that. Oops, but I should probably hit the dots if I can. This is always hard for me to draw. So it should look like a nice smooth curve like that, but just actually go through your ordered pairs. Is that okay? I just used the graph from the front, and I did what it said. All right? So 43, we're going to do part of it, okay? I'm going to start as if it said f of x is equal to log base, oops, 1 over 8, gracious, of x. You always start here. Here's the parent graph, is you ignore the 6 and you ignore the plus 2, okay? We're going to start with our parent graph just like the one I just did. So is it going to be the first, uh, first one or the second one? It's the second one again, right, because b is a fraction, so I pick this one. Okay, so we're not going to end up doing this last question, so you can use all this space down here for what we're going to do, okay? So I'm going to start with my b comma 1, my 1 comma 0, and my 1 over b comma negative 1. So I'm going to find my first set of ordered pairs just because the base is 1 eighth. So my first ordered pair is going to be what? 1 eighth 1. My second one for right now is just 1 0. And my third one is going to be? 8, negative 1. If this just said log base 1 eighth of x, that's where we would go. Is that okay? That's our parent graph, and, and we've got the 1 eighth guys. But it said plus, is that a plus 2? Plus 2, okay? So what's that mean? Left 2, because it was in grouping symbols. So I need to move these left 2. So before I ask you how to do that algebraically, because doing it visually is kind of hard to me and with a 1 eighth. I'm going to show you an easier example. If I had, you don't have to write this down, obviously. 
If I have, I don't know, three one. No, nope, that's a four one. Just kidding. If I have four one and I want it to go left two, where's that? Two one. How can I do that algebraically? Left two. Instead of looking at it visually like we just did, what math could I do? Subtract two from the x value. If you want to go left 2, you're talking x's, right? So that you're going to subtract 2 from the x's. So I'm going to subtract 2 from 1 eighth. I'm going to subtract 2 from 1, and I'm going to subtract 2 from 8. Let's do the easy ones first. What's the 1 0 going to become? Negative 1 0. What's the 8 1 going to become? Or excuse me, 8 negative 1. 6 negative 1. So now you might want a calculator. What's 1 8 minus 2? Yeah, it's all the same. I have negative 1 and 7 eighths. I'm kind of out of room, though. Negative 1 and 7 eighths, comma 1. Pretend you could read that. I'll write it again. Negative 1 and 7 over 8, comma 1. So those are our three ordered pairs before the 6 happened. Are you with me so far? I don't think we've done anything crazy. We did this part. That was easy. Left 2. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? The 6 part is actually um, a little bit harder than what I want you to do today. So we're going to skip it for now. I want you to get as far as I did, but when it has a 6 there, there's an algebraic way to do it, but that's not really the point of this chapter. So whenever it has a 6 there, what we're going to do is use a graphing calculator, but we're not going to do that today, okay? So we will come back to this, and we will use a graphing calculator, just not today. So on your homework, if you have one like this, I want you to do everything we did and just save the extra part for when we get the graphing calculators out probably tomorrow. Does that make sense? So do everything else, and then we'll use the calculator to finish it. And then we're not even doing this one today because it's the same thing. But where would it move, though? Where would that move? Down 9, left 1, and then we don't know, right? We'll do that with the calculator. So what's important to know is all the rules. I'm not so concerned today with you being able to do this. I mean, it's nice for you to know, but like I said, we'll pop out the calculator so it'll kind of do it for us. But what I do want you to know is what I just did. Down 9, left 1. Uh, is that just a 4? So you'd know which one to pick, right? And then a dilation. Because on your homework quiz tomorrow, I would ask you something like that, but I wouldn't make you do all this. So I'm just asking if you get the gist of it. Anybody confused? Are you sure? Okay, great. Um, so your asymptote, one more thing. Your asymptote was here, right? But we moved everything left to... So your asymptote is now there. Does that make sense? So it's going to look something like this again. But the asymptote moved because everything moved left 2. So if the asymptote was on the y-axis, it's going to be left 2 now at x equals negative 2. Do you get that? If that moved, everything moved. Okay. 